Oh, what's up guys? I'm here at Studer. We're in Switzerland, baby. Studer is the greatest cylindrical grinding company in the world. They're also a machine shop. Like the machine shop is on steroids. They got 700 employees. 10% of them are in an apprenticeship program. They train their own employees for a lifetime career at this company. And they have an assembly line. That's right, a moving assembly line. So their machines go from point to point to point. And actually they build them up and they come off a finished product. Crazy crazy quality, crazy workmanship, crazy technology. And I've been given an all access pass to actually go behind the scenes to give you an intimate look at all of it. Let's go check this out. Boom. I love it when you're in the Studer plant. You see Studer and sister company Magerle. You're using their machines to make their machines. Plant them at right there. Check this out, this is something that you've never seen before. This is absolutely incredible. This is the flow assembly line here at Studer. It is a moving assembly line. This is station number one. That's station number one. Station number two, three, four, five. You basically start with the foundation and you go next. Next, you have different machines based on work orders. So all machines actually come to this line right here. And when you're looking at this line, see that package right there? That is the tools and supply chain for this particular station right here. So all the tools and supplies that they need are right there. And basically after they use them and put everything together, then they will move that cart away and bring a new card in whatever comes next the entire line will move every four hours it will shift so they have four hours to get what they need to get done and then it shifts goes so all the way down and you can see it goes from foundation then it gets the sheet metal put on and then by the time it comes around it actually goes up makes a turn and then it comes back on this side and it comes down boom and then you pretty much have a finished machine from foundation to finished machine. Big old crane in movement right there. Woo, manufacturing on a high level, crazy precision machines right here at Studer. system right there so this CNC machine over here is just running lights out day and night 24 7 and then you actually have 28 pallets for parts that they make weekly daily yearly throughout and basically they change material and then the machine on its own grabs the pallet the pallet goes into the machine and they machine each particular part non-stop lights out and then all the parts end up being right down here Complete automation right here at the Studer plant. It's all about that fixturing right there. So the machine runs lights out. So the operator's job is to inspect the parts and to load the raw materials onto the fixturing. Every single part has its own fixturing on its own tombstone or pallet. The pallets get loaded into the machine. And then based on the schedule that they set, the machine will actually go up and call the pallet where you'll actually have a robot that comes over, grabs the pallet, takes it down, puts it into the machine. The previous part comes out goes into a waiting station for the operator at some point to haul the pallet up so they can actually take off the part put a new part on and then it's just a cycle non-stop so manufacturing in the real world no matter where you are you can make your own parts in your own country if you understand the art of fixturing you understand the art of making parts efficiently and you put a system like this in place full automation you can actually see all the all the pallets they're inside this cage right here they're lined up on this side they're lined up on the top and all the way down and then on the far side you can see they're on the back wall also boom great system machine changing Ooh, 
there's a big tool magazine on this bad boy. Let's go on in the back and check this thing out. Oh, and what do we have here? Lazer coolant right here in Switzerland. Best coolant ever. So I'm behind the machine right here. All you can see is just tools, 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 a million tools. Because when you have a pallet system and you have all of these different types of parts, you have to have tools for every single part. And again, at being a machinist, you gotta think about standardizing your tools. Let's use this type of end mill for all of these different parts. Not one end mill per part, but like one end mill for many different parts. You standardize it so you don't have to have a million. They're doing so many parts on this machine. It is seriously stacked. I gotta ask how many tools are in this machine because that's a lot. That's crazy. 200. 200, 200 tools? tools Ooh, 200 tools. Did you hear that? That's awesome. I got my man Mark over here. What's up, Mark? How much, Titan? How's it going? Oh, a Canadian in Switzerland. Who knew? That's right. Oh, <laughs> so how long have you been living here now? Uh, in Switzerland since 2012. Cool. And your history? Grew up just outside of Toronto, toolmaker by trade, and made my way over to Switzerland. My parents are Swiss, so I'm able to come over. Nice. And I haven't gone back. Yeah. You love it here? Yeah. Oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah, originally, I came for the chocolate and snowboarding. Oh, okay. Then I found out I have to work as well. So a better yeah. place to work than I know. And then now, uh, and then you got some crazy machining over here. And uh, what's your day today? Normally, I work together with North America, sure. United Grinding North America, for sales. Okay. For sales, so customer specific assemblies on the machine, cool. things like that. And then today, you're babysitting Titan. That's right. And then he's disappearing behind machines, and you're like, where'd this guy go? Exactly. He's not coming out. <laughs> thought we lost him. I know. I'm, I'm a big boy to lose, but this place is huge, and it can happen, so. <laughs> Now we're looking at all these different parts that are being machined lights out and every single part is critical. And just to show you guys one part that you've seen before, I keep showing this guy right here. This is the tool holder like for the spindle on the Walter Helitronic 400L, the one that we have in our shop for tool grinding. This is the spindle tool holder right here. So it's for the Walter, but they machine it here at Studer. Pretty awesome. This plant is crazy. I always say, you, you can be a machinist and you can learn how to program and do all these different things, but there's three basic things that will make you great. One is setup. Let's set up efficiently and then let's figure out ways to set up so we don't have to spend all the time every single time we do that job. So let's figure out how to use fixtures and, and how to lock them into the machine automatically so you take the time and setup out. So when you're a machinist and you can actually think about like efficient in setting parts up and you start using these crazy fixturing techniques to basically just load a fixture, boom, it's automatically set. You load a program, the program loads all offsets for you, takes all the time out. Like that right there is magic. And then I think second thing, one of the most important things as a machinist is fixturing, like creating crazy fixturing. You have to outthink, outsmart the competition and it's super important. So if one guy thinks about you know, running one side at a time and you can run five sides at a time, you've already won. If one person, guy or girl, puts in a regular vice and runs one or two parts on that vice, but you can put in a crazy fixture, then you run 60 parts, then you're making the company money and you deserve money. That is the art of fixturing. That is the difference right there between being a good machinist and a great machinist. Is your ability to outthink the machinist and to make brilliant fixturing. The third thing that makes a great machinist is programming. Let's take every single tool, find out what its limits are, running at 80% of those limits, and actually run fast. Let's take the times. If they're 10 minutes, let's get them down to 4 minutes. If they're 60 minutes, let's get them down to 20 minutes. Let's decrease our cycle times where we still have efficiency, longevity, you know, meaning the tools can actually last for a long time. If you're breaking tools, that's not a good thing so we want to program in a way that we are we are running the part fast and efficient we're making money but we're not breaking
breaking tools. And sometimes I'll run it a certain amount and maybe have to change out the tool every hour because we're running Monel, but that's a risk. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna waste a hundred dollars to make five hundred dollars. If I can just get after this and in one hour just take off all this material and I go through inserts or a tool, it might make sense to me if I'm taking off a huge amount of material. So there is money in that and you gotta figure out what's what's worth it. If this was gonna take five hours and in five hours I was gonna get one part done or rough and let's say the material is Inconel or Manel. If I could do it in an hour, I would save four hours of machine time. Is that worth the cost of one tool? Maybe, probably. So sometimes you just have to figure it out. And then if you're willing to actually doll up a tool or do something, then you use tool management and say, hey, run that tool for one hour, then go grab tool 20, run tool 20 as tool one and continue the process. And maybe even grab 21, 22 and run them right afterwards. That's tool management. That's something if you guys don't know about it, a lot of the machines have it. And if you put it into use, you start making good money. I love just parts after parts after parts. And this section, you see the gentleman, this guy over here, he's actually scraping. Again, when we were at Magerle, we actually saw that they machine and grind surfaces, then they come in to get it super perfect and they hand scrape and they do the same thing over here at Studer. This is the scraping department. Complete workmanship, complete quality, complete rigidity, hand scraping so the surface is absolutely perfect. And nobody can do it better than a human. So when these parts just go together, everything is perfect, everything is rigid, which gives you the ability to hit those crazy tolerances. So good. As you can see, there's castings everywhere and you know, when you look at the castings, you might think they're just leaving the castings out, but it is on purpose that they're leaving them out. Because just like when you bake a cake and you put it on the window seal and you let it sit to let all the molecules, everything just settle in place so it tastes super good. It's the same thing with the castings where they want these castings to just set, they want it to rust, they want the temperature to go up, go down. They want the molecules, everything inside the material to basically just settle so that then they can bring it inside and do the finished machining. Basically, you're letting the stress out by leaving it in the sun, leaving it overnight and all that. Now, when you look at the color, it's just gray. And that's exactly what it is. It is gray cast iron. So Mark, this is like a really cool section right here. This is what, the overhaul section. Exactly. So you have all different types of machines in this place. Like this particular machine right here, it's a 2000. Exactly. And so 22 years nonstop just grinding. So they can actually send the machine back to you and then you just refurbish it, right? We refurbish it, yeah, we tear it down. If it's a complete overhaul, we tear it right down to the base, redo the guideways and build the machine back up. It'll look exactly like how it was when it was brand awesome. new. So yeah. sometimes they go all all the way down and sometimes they just want like the tables redone. It depends on what the customer ways. needs. We do quotations and it's up nice. to the customer. Yeah. So you don't have to just go buy a new machine because exactly. these machines, they last forever. Exactly. Uh, super good. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Now, a lot of places have customer centers and stuff, but this one is truly exceptional because look at all the machines. They didn't just put throwaway machines. They put amazing machines and they put the machines here so they can train the customers. Customers will purchase a machine. They'll fly in from all over the world and they will actually train those customers on these machines to use them, to set them up, to program them, everything. Now, besides the machines, you can go on grindingacademy.com and you can learn from us on our Grinding Academy. I mean, super awesome. one thing that I love about Studer, Studer, they have an amazing program. 10% of all employees are in the apprenticeship program and they're learning how to use the machines. It's a multi-year program depending on what they're doing. And then they actually go to work for Studer full time and have a lifelong career working at one of the greatest grinding companies in the world, period. Boom. 
Studer, underground, in the museum. Let's go, baby. One of my favorite places right here at Studer is the museum. So they have machines dating way back to the beginning. Studer was founded in 1912. So what is that, 110 years they've been doing this and they've learned a lot and they've gone through different variations. So when you actually come to the museum, you can see that heritage of how they made machines and how they changed over the years. There's beautiful craftsmanship. Each piece is a work of art. And back in the day, it wasn't all all CNC's. They had to literally make these machines and uh, make machines to make machines and figure out how to actually go into production, how to be efficient. Just true masters of the game. And I love that they keep all these machines still housed here at Studer. All right, so we're coming to the end and I wanted to actually, uh, you guys already know Mark. Mark is amazing and uh, he's been walking through the plant. I also want to uh, give a shout out to Paul. Uh, a lot of guys don't know Paul, but he does a lot in the backgrounds and he actually made it possible for us to come over here. So thank you, brother. Boom. Welcome. Known you for some years now. Yeah. Good, good, good. 2019 already. 2019 emo. Uh, and with that, I think it's a good time to say goodbye. So thank you very much. Give you a handshake right there. Thank you thank very you. much. And uh, from the Studer Museum, signing off. Boom. 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 <laughs>